उस अंजुमन ए नाज की क्या बात है गालिब हम भी गए वहाँ और तेरी तकबी तकदीर पे रो आए उस अंजुमन ए नाज की क्या बात है गालिब हम भी आए वहाँ और अब तेरी तकदीर को रो आए ये भव्य समारोह कथा कौन कह भी मु भी आसली जा बहे दुर्भाग्यर कांदा कांदी आस लेडीज एंड जेटलमैन द रिजन आई रिमेम्बर दिस कपलेट इज दैट इन एवरी कन्क्लेव दैट सिक्स टू मार्क और चौक आउट दि प्रस्पेक्ट एंड फ्यूचर फर डे सा वी हाव ए लट अफ लैमेटेशन दैट मेनी थिंगस हाव नट हापन एंड थिंगस आर नट मुविंग द रईट वे आई डू नट विश दिस पर्टिकुलर कन्क्लेव टू गो दैट वे एंड दैर फोर आई विश टू प्रेजेंट टू यू समथिंग एक्सट्रीमली different from what is conventionally done in these conclaves first of all what exactly do the people want this is one of the most important points on which with which i would begin my presentation what is it exactly that people want now there was a survey done globally which has been reported in 2016 in a book by one harari who has written a book called the homo deus you might have seen that book it has just been published he says a survey showed that people in the world want three things to happen to them in the short term and as well as in the long run that is the understatement these three things are divinity bliss and immortality amazing amazing because i thought people would be talking about poverty talking about peace technology ecology employment energy water and uh, a lot of space and what lot lot of things but instead people all over the world wanted three things to happen to the world during the 21st century the agenda of 21st century for human beings is immortality bliss and divinity this underscores a point which you should not lose sight of because the underlying thesis is that there is no development there is no progress unless a man feels within himself that indeed there has been progress or development the process of internalization has not happened and there is a hiatus a gap between the individual and those who plan his future this is the opening statement with which i would now come to four laws i would not expound them i would just leave behind in your mind four laws to remember the first law is all development you speak of do not make you better or take you ahead unless you feel it internally law number 1 law number 2 as we accumulate more data and increase our computing power events become wilder and more unexpected law number 3 the more we know the less we can predict law number 4 knowledge that doesn't change behavior is useless but knowledge that changes behavior quickly loses its relevance and the last of the laws is the better we understand history the faster history alters its course and the faster our knowledge becomes outdated these laws are to be remembered for the sake of remembering i had come back to it towards the end of my submissions to you now i was speak telling you about the wish of the people and the wish of the people all over the world are these three things which are nebulous which are at a height which is not conceived of by any government or any individual or any society look at the american people the american people were asked what is the goal of america by 2036 2036 is relevant because in 2036 odisha would be completing 100 years you know what are the dreams of the americans in 2036 dreams are a pizza delivered by drone then you have a driverless car virtual medical care virtual conjugality and cell phone 
under the skin. This is the wish or the dream of the Americans. Against this, the global survey shows that the world wants something else. And what the world wants today is closer to what perhaps the Indian mind has all along been aspiring for. Having said that, let me take you back to 1936. Was any agenda set when Odisha became a separate province? Those who got the status of a, an independent state in 1936, did they have an agenda before them as to what is to be done after a linguistic state is created? Unfortunately, the records of the time show that they did not have an agenda as to what to do with the linguistic state that they had got. Having said that, I must tell you that the period from 1936 to 1947 is a period which was virtually lost. I had the opportunity of talking to people in the age group of 75 to, let's say, 90, very elderly people, just to know from them. They were in school and college at that point of time. As to what was the atmosphere at that point of time? What did they feel? They said that the freedom was very much in the air and the national leaders had become local leaders and Madhusudan Das and Gopabandhu Das were the two idols each one worshipped. In a way, what they were trying to convey to me is that the independence movement subverted the Odia movement. It's a point to be noted because we, have, we are right now calculating the lost opportunities. So the independence movement subverted the Odia movement. Having said that, we come to the period from 1947 to 1960. A similar survey, similar questions asked, elicited the kind of responses which I didn't expect. They said that uh, euphoria of, in, of independence was in the air. National leaders had become already local leaders in the sense that Gandhi and Nehru and all the other national leaders were being worshipped in Odisha as well as, as well as the local leaders would be. Then the Congress brand of left of center socialism was the intellectual stuff of the time. Then Odia literature had become intellectually challenging and the issue of identity had once cropped up during the SRC, that is State Reorganization Commission in 1951 and not thereafter. So that period also was lost without making much of a dent. Then you come to a period, let's say 1960 to now 2000. All of you are aware that 1960s were the most important period in the history of the world. This is the period which saw decolonization. This is the period which saw the Beatles. This is the period which saw existentialism. And this is the period when Valentin and Tereskova went to space. So this was a period of liberation. But 2060, the gains of liberation were soon lost locally because its impact on the local identity of Odisha meant that there was no leader at the national level, that Odias meant nothing at the national scale, that Odia culture and identity was not being presented in any forum, anywhere outside Odisha. Had not Charles Fabry been there, Odisha dance also would not have been recognized as a classical dance form. So we had many losses also during the period. Urbanization had set in and Poverty has become, had become the centerpiece of the political discourse and thereafter nothing much was done. And during the period 2002-2016, information technology has destroyed, destroyed, let me underscore, Mr. Bakchi may take exception to that, whatever talent we had for didactic thinking. The information highway virtually destroyed a new crop, fresh crop of talents which could have contributed to thinking in the society. The political objective has been achieved perfectly in tune with the national politics, but the ODI identity itself has not become a subject of political discourse in the state. And there is a slow opening up of the public space. This public space, in, in fact, is the point which I would wish to make. Now, what are the problems which I wish to deal with in the context of what I see as a vision for the future? The first enemy of any development is to think 
that the government is responsible for doing everything. As a matter of fact, I wish to propose to you a theory of democracy. The democracy has created electorate. It has not created public space. This is something that has to be recognized. Governmentality or governmentalism is the first obstacle on the way of ODIAs realizing their dreams or even thinking big for the future. Who says investment is only to be done in industry? Who says investment is only to be done in the social welfare sector? There is a huge scope for investment in the public space which until rem now remains totally unorganized and untapped from the, from the point of view of investment. So, over-governance has thwarted the emergence of public space. Over-governance has undermined the growth of knowledge in the society. Over-governance has repudiated the emergence of private innovation. Over-governance has discouraged investment in public projects. As a matter of fact, all the projects that are done by the government are government projects and not public projects that way. So I would not let the government be a subject of discussion in my submissions to you. Who am I to tell the government what is to be done by the government? Because the government pays scant attention to what an individual writes to them or even a group of per persons write to the government asking the government to act upon it. Mr. Sahu is here present, the former Chief Secretary of the State. He knows thousands of petitions requests are received by the government on a daily basis. And what is the fate of those? So, I would leave the government with their plan, with their agenda, with their budget, and would let them implement whatever schemes they can implement in their own way. I would like to appeal to the you, those who are ready to invest in Odisha, to look at the public space for investment. The second problem where Mr. Laik is likely to be hurt is too much of economism in development planning. All deliveries are now measured in terms of economics. All options are worked out in terms of economics. All alternatives are tested by economics. And all successes are measured in terms of economics. This is economism, over-economizing the development process and over-economizing the will of the people in the name of democracy is the problem we must combat. Rise of the public space is the only answer to that question because the public space doesn't dwell in economics. It deals with social reality. The third problem is over-informing. That is called informism in the sense there is too much of information too much of information available without interpretation, without analysis, without coalition, without relationships being established amongst them, without any conclusions being drawn. So a lot of information has led to informism. So there are three enemies of the prospect for development for a state like Odisha on a larger scale for a country like India, or for that matter, any developing country. That is governmentalism, economism, and informism. These are the three things that can be combated by the opening up of the public space. As I presented to you, democracy was supposed to be a system of governance by which people do participate in government. But what has in fact happened is creation of governmental dictatorship in the sense that you surrender your right to the government through an electoral process but after the government comes to power, there is no accountability. So, the public space is never created. Terry Eagleton conceived of this particular phrase quite some time in the 80s with the idea of public space becoming a subject of debate in intellectual circuits. But today, public space is the only criticism of democracy. There is no other criticism. In other words, democracy has created electorate without creating a public space. That is why you get wrong kinds of persons representing the democratic order in legislature. So, having said that, I must now come to concrete plans. The investors present here, may let me appeal to you, sir. If you wish to make an investment, think of the investment proposals I am directly placing before you, which are my, which are very much parts of my vision of Odisha. Firstly, just think of a project for rewriting the history of Odisha. 
Now what is this? Why should you rewrite the history of Odisha? You have to rewrite the history of Odisha because history of Odisha has not been properly written. It has been written for a poorly people, very poorly conceived and without keeping in mind the fact that these people are great survivors over thousands of years and yes, I will run through the proposals because I cannot cut it short, shorter than what is possible. So I will run through the proposal. Let me give you the project, rewriting the history of Odisha. Project for publishing all the classics that have been lost and are going to be yet, yet to be discovered. Project for investing in the non-pedagogic, creation of non-pedagogic reading material for the new, new literate. These are things which need investment and we do not have the investment potential. So investment has to be done by somebody. A project for translating ODI classics into English, into English by an Englishman, not by us. Because an ODI classic translated by an ODI is not going to be picked up by a person who matters in the world. Let me be very candid with you. The case of Pablo Neruda is in with you. Pablo Neruda was translated and was a global classic. Otherwise, I think nobody would have read him. A project for creation of a large public library, a project for the creation of an institution of public accountability, a project for the creation of an institute of English yes. writing and, and reading, my friends. English articulation. Somebody speaking? Project for creation of an institution for skill language interface. Mr. Bakshi is here. He's doing a lot of work in the area of skill. But what is the point in doing a lot of work in skill at the lower level without having an interface with language? So language skill, language technology interface, that has to be a project. A project for recreation of the folk tradition and you have to have projects in a number of, in the sector of language and literature, forget that. Then for energizing public sector, there is a two or three things to be done. Project for creation of a civil society. A project for the creation, if civil society in Odisha has not been created until now, it is not because there are no pe pe bodies available. It is just because an institutional framework has to be there to bind them together and it calls for investment. Somebody has to sustain it. So creation of a civil society, a project for the creation of an institute for voluntarism, teaching voluntarism, making voluntarism a code of conduct in the society, and a project for creation of an institution for leadership. In addition to that, you have areas like publishing, you have areas like films, you have areas like sort of um, filming the classics, presenting the best of Odisha outside, showcasing the best. Those are so demonstrated effects and which would be taken care of automatically. Now in sum, I am requesting the investors of Odisha to come to invest in the public sphere after opening up the public sphere because no amount of suggestions to the government for creating a project, unless it's a public-private partnership and government agrees to join with you, is going to be of any use. The only way Odisha can become a better place to live in, only way Odias can feel proud of themselves is when the Odia public space is rediscovered, recreated, re-energized. And ladies and gentlemen, do not forget to take away at least one result from this particular event that has been organized for you. If you really feel that something has to be done for Odisha, let the persons present here today constitute the nucleus of the civil society that is created today itself. If you do not create something today, tomorrow is too late. Because we have lost several tomorrows during the last 50, 60 years. Ladies and gentlemen, I want this matter to be considered quickly and a decision to be taken as a takeaway of this particular con con conclave. Otherwise, as it is said, Aha ko chahi ek umra asar hone tak, kon jita hai tere julf ki asar hone tak. Who lives, who lives until, until the proposals take result. Thank you ladies and gentlemen.